And we're back with a fabulous technical segment by none other than Mick Douglas on PowerCat. Take it away, Mick. All right. Well, thanks, Paul. And I don't know if the word fabulous is uh, ready to be applied to this tool just yet. But um, what I'd like to do is uh, spend a little time with you all and show you PowerCat. And PowerCat is a bit of research that I've been doing here for about a month now, and it's uh, pretty interesting. Now, anybody who knows me knows that I really love Netcat. In fact, most pen testers that I think who are halfway decent love Netcat. It's a great tool, lots of flexibility. But why? So, Paul, why do you like Netcat? Oh, let me count the ways. Mm -hmm. uh, one being it's on a lot of systems already. It's small, light, and portable if I need to put it there. Uh, right. It lets me do it lets me do the in, it lets me do the out. You know what I'm saying? It lets me yeah. transfer files. Yep. Do I have hey, to go on? Carlos, you like Netcat. What do you like it for? Oh, flexibility. I can do a... a it, it is kind of like... Um, I would say a last resource tool or one that I would call a basics, uh, kind of basic piece of kit, where if I need a port scanner and have access to other stuff, I can make it do a port scan. If I need to redirect stuff, I can have it redirect stuff. If I want to use it as, as a chat client, I can use it as a chat client. So it's kind of flexibility of it. In fact, I've, I've been using recently more than anything NCAT from the... Uh, um, NMAP project. NMAP project. Yeah, that NMAP Netcat or NCAT is really cool, and I'll be mentioning that actually in a little bit here. <laughs> Mick, hey, Mick, before uh, you get yeah. to that, I want to mention our sponsors for this segment. I apologize. Oh. All the production staff is going crazy now because I've done sponsors in a, in a different. Oh, see there. Hold on. This. <laughs> please stay tuned. The sponsors for this segment, in fact, are Black Squirrel.io. Pen test networks from your browser. Exploit the limits of network security through just a browser. Have a Chrome exploit in your toolkit. Good. But for the rest of us, there's Black Squirrel. Visit blacksquirrel.io for more information. And by Anapsis, the leading provider of solutions to protect ERP systems from cyber attacks. Customers can secure their SSP and Oracle business critical platforms from espionage, sabotage, and financial fraud risks. Visit them on the web at anapsis.com. Sorry, Mick. Now... Back to you. Okay, thanks. Sorry about that. So, we were talking about why we love uh, Netcat. And one of the things that I like about it is that you can do things like shovel a shell with it. And I'll be actually doing a demo of that here in a little bit. Um, but, like I said, there's, and like you guys all mentioned, there's lots of cool things that you can do with Netcat. And if you haven't used Netcat yet and you want to get into pen testing or you're a junior pen tester, the one thing I want to stress is that you have to learn Netcat or Netcat style tools because it gives you a level of functionality and flexibility that you're just not going to get any other way. So I'm you know, not trying to make this be a self-serving tech segment where I say, hey, look at my shiny thing. In fact, I'm actually just saying quite the opposite. I'm saying go out, play with the different variants of Netcat that are out there. There's some ones that are really interesting. Um, one that I've been playing around with a lot is DNS Cat by Ron Bowes. And that's a Netcat that works all over DNS. It's very, very stealthy and really cool. And a few moments ago, Carlos mentioned NCAT from the NMAP team. And that one's just awesome. It's really fully functional. It's got things like SSL and um, you can do UDP with it and it's really really neat. And what I'm humbly suggesting is that we add this tool PowerCat to the list of tools that allow Netcat style functionality. And the reason that I made this tool is that there's a problem. When you go on a lot of pen tests Paul, earlier you mentioned that Netcat is installed on a lot of systems. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go into a Windows environment, how often do you find Netcat? Very, very, very rarely, and usually only if some other evil bad guy or sloppy penetration tester has been there before me. Exactly. In fact, if, if it's there, I almost always uh, stop the pen test and get the incident response team mm -hmm. fired up because it is like bad news is going down. 
Um, another problem is that um, I don't know if you folks watched it or not, but we had a podcast or a web webcast uh, not too long ago from Black Hills where we were showing how we were bypassing antivirus. And one of the problems that you'll have in corporate environments is that if you send uh, are able to either trick somebody into downloading Netcat or sending it as an email attachment, antivirus more often than not is going to flag it and delete it. So even if you are able to get Netcat to someone, it's still going to get caught. So the solution to this is to use PowerShell. And that's uh, been uh, a trend for, I don't know, maybe two years now. Carlos, you might need to back me up on this. How long has the trend been to using PowerShell as an antivirus evasion? Um, yeah, around two or three years. Uh, yeah, two, two or three years. And so the reason that PowerShell makes such a great antivirus evasion technique is that PowerShell is installed on every Windows system that's Windows 7 and older and for the that's on the desktop and on the um, server OS it's Windows 2k8 SR2 or better and you've got PowerShell so PowerShell is incredibly powerful it's got all kinds of bells and whistles and one of the things that it has that we really really like about it is that it's all object oriented and you can use PowerShell to take primitive components and build upon them to make some really, really interesting and powerful components. One of the components that PowerShell has that wasn't advertised as well as it could have been is that PowerShell natively allows you to create TCP listeners and TCP clients. Using those two bits of technology, you can actually recreate Netcat style code. And what PowerCat really is is nothing more than a wrapper that takes those TCP listeners and TCP clients and opens up sockets and takes data from one input and pipes it through to another output and allows you to have the same flexibility that Netcat gives you. So uh, that's PowerCat. The nice thing about PowerCat is that it's built using version 2 of PowerShell only. That's because um, out of the chute, it will work everywhere. There's no additional modules that you're going to need to install. All you need is this one PowerShell script, and you'll be good to go. So now you can fairly easily get Netcat-style functionality on a Windows system and not have to worry about antivirus tripping. So... Now comes the Mr. T slide. No more jibber-jabber. It's demo time. So, let's start the demos. So, here... you'll. Oh, boy. Let's get this Windows started up. So, here you're going to see... We've got our Windows box. And... It will have uh, PowerShell running here in just a moment. demo fail already. Did you sacrifice a small animal to the uh, demo gods? Oh. <clears throat> Actually, I should have. Okay, here we go. All right, so let me zoom in here a bit, make this easier to see. Now, um, PowerCat is uh, a fairly simple command line tool, and I'm trying to make it work as close to regular uh, Netcat as possible. And so what you can do is just run it in listen mode, or you can run it in client mode to send data um, back and forth. So if we wanted to do like a client where, say, in our Linux environment, we're running a netcat listener at this port. So we've got a netcat listener. Then we can do a powercat to connect to our Linux install. 
Make it bigger. Okay, I will in just a second. Sorry. That's what she said. Is that better? <laughs> on the on the uh, video, Mickey, I'm sorry, your fonts just need to be fairly large. How's that? I don't see any difference. Oh. Well, I don't know how to do that <laughs> via Skype because I'm using the um, zoom in mode in... Uh, Mac OS. Yeah, that doesn't... The zoom-in mode on Mac OS doesn't transfer that to whatever software is capturing your video, whether it be Skype mm. or some other thing. So if you can make it bigger inside of that window, I don't know if you're in a VM or... Well, let me see uh, what I can do. Oh, I would you're say using... go full screen and then um, do that, what, what you're doing right now. How's that? Better? Change the, the font oh. to Lucidus console. It will make it look even better. For demos. Whatever Carlos says is what yeah, I'm what going Carlos with. Carlos says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, since I have done it for class so much, the best font for demos is Lucidus Console. Okay, so font. There you go. How's that? Better? Yay. Oh, yeah. Good, guys? There's, there's, they're like, it's okay. If, okay. if I could see it, I would tell you it's good. All okay. right, so now you can see that I'm typing text. We can sort of see that you're typing text. All right, you'll have to take my word for it <laughs> that I'm typing text. <clears throat> and now you'll see here, let me zoom in on here, you can now see that the text is showing up here. So we're taking uh, standard input on the Windows machine, piping it through the network, and having it display on standard out on that Linux system. And that's the base level uh, form of Netcat. Now, uh, just all written in PowerShell. So now, let's show you what we can do if we get a little crazy, though. This is the, uh, right now, the cool demo. What we're going to do is send a shell, a cmd.exe, over the network. So we're going to do it like this. We're going to do PowerCat, and we're going to set it to listen, and then we're going to put it on port. We're going to execute cmd.exe when it connects. And so now the, on the Windows system, it's just waiting for a connection to happen. So. Now, all we need to do in the Linux system is do a netcat, connect to the different to the remote box, and now we're connected. And so I can enter commands. Oh boy. Demo failing. <laughs> Oh, come on. This worked. What type of animal did you sacrifice to the demo gods? Maybe it wasn't a... It's too small of a goat. Probably. Or, or do like I do. I always blame my wife. <clears throat> Looks like you have networking issues, Mick. Yeah, I know. That's, that's what I'm that's, checking that's out my, right now. That's my professional opinion. Are you sure that the machine's not... Uh, NAT it or something like that. Oh, the, my IP changed. Okay, so now I connect in. Oh, wait. Okay, there we go. Got my. Okay, and now. Now I connect, and now I'm good, and I can type in commands like dir. And now you'll see that I actually was able to pull. Wait. Now. Now it'll work. Now that I've got the correct IP address in there, I'm yep. now there pulling the command.exe from that remote system. And so I can do things like this, echo username like that, and boom, it will pull the user account that was running that uh, PowerShell as. So now I've got a remote cmd.exe 
all native PowerShell, can't be caught by antivirus, and as long as you've got ports and firewall uh, connectivity permitted, you'll be good to go. Now, um, PowerCat still is in its infancy, and the official release for it will be at DerbyCon, and on Saturday in the stable talk at 4 o'clock, I'll be giving a, a much longer demo of how it works, and hopefully I'll have made appropriate demo god sacrifices. But that is PowerCat. Awesome. Mick, thank you so much, and uh, we look forward to your presentation at DerbyCon. Even though it overlaps with mine, I thought I didn't overlap with any of the Security of the Week crew, but... Yeah, well, just think of my presentation on PowerCat as overflow for your room. Wow, I don't know about that. That's This stuff sounds really cool, so um, that's awesome. And with that, we're going to take a short break, come back, and talk about the stories for this week. Thanks, Mick. Thank you.